Before we get to the movie, I have a question here from David Robertson who says, Why comedy? It's <laughs> a good question. The short answer is because drama is too hard. Comedy is harder than drama. Not for me. I was a serious actor. I was a comedic actor. And I always found comedy to be a more, more natural fit for me, to be easier and to have kind of more juice to it. There's like a right answer, it seems, in comedy. All right, that's a right answer, but that's a more right answer. This is going to sound weird. They always say you should be your own worst critic. Mm -hmm. And I am. Oh, yes. But I'm also my own best audience. When I do something funny that I think is funny, I just, I love it. You need comedy to laugh at how horrible the world is. Yeah. To laugh at the tragedy, to laugh at the jerks, to laugh at the snobs. This is how we fight. Stick it to the jerks. That's right. We're not the jerks. No, no, don't stick it to us. No, we're, we're, we're the good guys. Huh. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Happy birthday to me! Craig has brought me the gift of a movie to celebrate my birthday. What do you got? Well, you requested a movie from 2016 or 2017. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, it was a really tough job for me. For someone who's been complaining for the last two years about, oh, how hard it is for me to keep up with movies now that I have a kid, turns out I've been keeping up just fine. <laughs> I've seen almost everything I want to see from 2016 and 2017. But there is one movie that I am curious about, and it's got things we like in it. Big black cats, and it's got a bear, and it's got wolves, and it's got monkeys, and it's even got a man cub. It's The, the Jungle Book. Book. There we go. We will get a little more than the bare necessities with this film. Released in 2016 and directed by Jean Favreau, this is a remake of the 1967 Disney cartoon classic, which of course is also based off of the Rudyard Kipling novel of the same name. It's got Bill Murray, Ben Kingsley, Idris Elba, Lupita Nyong'o, it's got Scarlett Johansson, John Carlo Esposito, Gary Shandling in his final performance, and as King Louis, Christopher Walken. Is this a musical? I think there might be one or two songs in it. Okay. It had a budget of $175 million, which ties it with Waterworld as the most expensive movie we've had yet on the show. But it did a lot better at the box office, making about a billion dollars worldwide. I didn't know it was that big when it came out. So, Matt, what do you think? Let's go to the jungle, man. Okay. The Jungle Book has been entertaining kids for generations. I bought you something that will entertain kids who might be stopping by, and maybe even the kid in you. Uh, yeah, what is it? Well. <laughs> Stare into it. I feel like I'm looking in the eyes of that serpent. <laughs> That's right. Forget about your worries and your strife and head on over to the big leather couch to watch The Jungle Book. Wow. When I wish upon a star... Nothing happens. Yeah? Yeah. The stars have been screwing me my entire life. Mowgli, a man-cub, is running through the jungle. He's being chased by wolves. Oh, no. A huge black panther jumps out of the brush. Cecil. Uh, it looks like it's the end for Mowgli, but it turns out they're all friends. Cats and dogs living together. This is exactly what Bill Murray predicted. Mass hysteria, man. The black cat is Bagheera, and he's a bit of a stick in the mud. The alpha male is Akila. His wife is Raksha. If it's meant to be, it will be. Que sera, sera. <laughs> They recite the law of the jungle, and they all give a good howling at day's end. The dry season happens. A porcupine is going down to the watering hole and he notices something. Peace Rock! And when the waters dip down far enough that you can see Peace Rock... It's the truce, the water truce! No one can eat anyone else down at the watering hole. Not everyone here has seen a man cub in the jungle. Ah! <laughs> Sorry! Mowgli starts using different ways to get the water. What was the rule about your tricks? Stop showing off your thumbs! Suddenly a mighty tiger shows up. This is Shere Khan, the meanest tiger in the jungle. Hey there, tiger. Uh, you burning bright in the jungles of the night? And he's been burned up on his face. I smell a man. W what? What's happening? A man cub becomes man, and man is forbidden! Mowgli belongs to my pack. We'll see about that. 
As soon as this water truce is over, I'm gonna get that boy. Go back to where you came from, you burned beast. You burnt. The tiger knows who rules this part of the jungle. It's the peacock. I don't know how, but <laughs> we voted him in. I'm calling you out, man cub, because that is what I'm saying. You, my stomach, be there. And then it starts raining. Rain, rain, rain. Well, he's gonna get it. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. Go to the man village, and I'm gonna live among them. Great, I'll take you there. They go on a long walk. Mowgli's like, well, why can't I be raised by these guys? Or why can't I be raised by these guys? They're turtles like me. I like turtles. What about the rhinos? A bunch of elephants show up. You have to bow down to them. The elephants created this jungle. They made all the belongs. Whatever you do, don't show them a mouse. <laughs> They're bopping along through the veldt. You know what the Wildebeest's favorite song is? No. Born to be Wilda. <laughs> Mowgli, listen, you gotta run for that ravine, you gotta do it right now, because a tiger's about to attack! <laughs> Shere Khan and Bagheera scrap it up a little bit, and then Shere Khan goes after Mowgli. You can't outrun a tiger if you're a little boy. Mowgli is saved by this stampeding herd of animals. Oh, he just got Lion Kinged. <laughs> Jesus, this is the Revenant all of a sudden. <laughs> Mowgli escapes by using a water buffalo. Shere Khan is annoyed by all this. He goes back to the wolves. What up, dog? I didn't want to do it like this. Why are we sending him back to the village? That wasn't part of the deal. He's supposed to be sent to my stomach. You know what? You're going over the cliff. Bye-bye, Akila. Before I even got a decent Gus Fring joke out of this. Or why are there no brothers on the walls of <laughs> Sal's Pizzeria? We had a Giancarlo Esposito on the show and I didn't get to use any of my, my stuff. You surviving wolves, this is my territory right now. You're going to do what I say. Mowgli finds himself in an unfamiliar part of the jungle. He sees some hanging fruits. Huh, necessities. <laughs> that one's poison, yeah. Next one, poison, yeah. These are, these are all poison. Hello? Suddenly he hears a voice. Hi, little cub. <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you. Just gonna hug you. I'm a giant snake. You must be that man cub. Who are you? Scarlet Johan Snake. The snake's name is Ka. And she tells Mowgli a few things about the red flower that the men use that burns down things. The story of this little boy who was in a cave with his father. Shere Khan came in to eat him. And the tiger kills the father. But not before he was burned by the red flower's touch. You burnt! This boy is found by Bagheera. Are you my pop pop? Oh, gentle, gentle, <laughs> and brought to the wolves to be raised by them. While he's being told his origin story, the snake has wrapped herself around him and has lulled him into a state of torpor. Now it's time for lunch. You're in the jungle, Mowgli. Oh. You're gonna die. Mowgli is rescued by a bear. That bear's name is Baloo. <laughs> no need to get worked up. Okay. I did you a favor, so you need to do me a favor. I want you to climb up that cliff and get that honey for me because I likes that honey. I'm a bear, don't you know? There is also a picnic basket up there. You can grab that too. Mowgli says, I can't do it. It's too high up. And the bear says, do it. Mowgli is clever and he knows how to use tools. The bees, the bees, my eyes. Yeah, it's a man cub. Can you believe it? Are you sure? Would you please shut up? Would you please stop the goddamn hammering? Mowgli gets stabbed by a bunch of bees. Oh, yeah! Baloo gets a little bit of honey. If you stuck around... I can't. I have to go to the man village. I've got an important job interview there. You can't live in the man village without a good job. The cost of living there is outrageous. You know, back in the 70s, <laughs> someone could afford to live in the man village. But now, with all this inflation... You want to go to the village? I can take you to the village. I'll, I'll do it right now. Let's go. Let's go. Baloo's not just a bear. He's a songwriter. Everyone's got a song. Didn't the wolves ever sing? I don't know. They told Dirty Limericks. Mowgli looks at the distant village. They do love their red flower. Let it loose and it destroys everything it touches. Don't ever play with it. You got that? And when you hit puberty, don't play with yourself. You'll grow hair on your palms. Look at me. What I saw you do today, I've never seen anything like it. I use my tricks. What tricks? I'm tricksy and false, just like Hobbits is. <laughs> Bagheera told you you had to go to that village to be a man, but... I say, you could be a man right here. We can be partners and frolic in the jungle. And you can give me more of that honey. 
Mowgli says, I'll do it. Raksha wakes up one night, and the cubs are gone. It's Shere Khan up on top of the rock talking to the cubs about how some mothers in nature are selfish, and some are stupid, and they forget their own cubs. Think about that, kids. Now you go back to sleep. Mowgli devises an even more elaborate mechanism to get the honey. And suddenly, Baloo's got more honey than he knows what to do with. The bees, meanwhile, are screwed. Look for the bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. Mm, it'll be okay, now. They're singing now? <laughs> and they float along in a pool of water and everything's peaceful. The bare necessity. Nah. The bare necessities of life will come to you. I don't like it. <laughs> but then Bagheera shows up. He's been tracking Mowgli and has finally found him. I'm taking you back to the village tomorrow. That night, Mowgli is woken up. The elephant's drunk again. The elephants are upset. Something's wrong. The elephants are like, hey, 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 what, what? And Mowgli bows down to them. All right, we cool. <laughs> They're in trouble. They need my skills. Cecil has that exact same look when he wants his dinner. <laughs> the baby elephant was trapped in a pit, and he rescues it. Luckily, he did put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> yes. Boy, those elephants are grateful. Just those bare necessities. As our bear can rest at ease. <laughs> All in a day's work for an 11 year old. Bagheera has a heart to heart with Baloo. Shere Khan. Shere Khan's hunting him? Shere Khan gonna rock and rock Shere Khan? What if you rock That's all I gotta do. You know Mowgli's gotta go to that village, right? He'll listen to you, you convince him. Baloo does the old Harry and the Hendersons trick. You go away! I don't like you anymore! I've just been using you! Or I got my honey. Go to that village. Jerk, get, get out. And that's about the hardest thing I've ever done. Because you're very lazy. <laughs> I know you. Mowgli goes to pout up a tree, where he's promptly kidnapped by monkeys. There we go. Unlikely odd couple. Saving the boy. Where are they taking him? This way. They're taking him into the third act. And he's taken to this ruined temple. <laughs> More cowbell. What part of the jungle are you from? You come from the south, the north, what what part? East side for life. This is their king. Call me Louis. <laughs> king Louis wants the red flower. Some might even say I oh, got a fever for the red flower. <clears throat> because once you have it, you rise to the top of the food chain. He can't start a fire, but he knows about the food chain. <laughs> Everyone in the jungle knows about the food chain. It's not the food pyramid. <laughs> he'll be just as powerful as man. Or to put it another way, he'll be just like you, who, who. Oh, what we do? I'm gonna be like you. Baloo bumbles in. Am I in the right monkey temple? Why isn't he dressing up as a female monkey like he did in the cartoon? <laughs> wow, look, uh, distractions. Mowgli goes off with Bagheera. <laughs> Subterfuge! <laughs> Monkey rumble! Louie informs Mowgli, Akela's dead, pal. Louie tears apart his own temple. <laughs> and the temple collapses on top of him. Is this the end of Louie? You knew! And nobody did anything about it! I'm out of here. Mowgli creeps into the village, thinks about Shere Khan. He's not going to stand for this anymore. He's not going to run away from this guy. He's going to confront him. So he grabs the red flower, and he runs off through the jungle. A little cinder falls into the jungle and starts a fire. Shere Khan! I'm not afraid of you! You burned down the jungle, smarty. Did I do that? <laughs> what have I done? He throws the fire in the water. That's just what I wanted you to do, and now I'm going to get you. Bagheera attacks. Oh, get him, Cecil. He goes down. Baloo attacks. He goes down. The wolves attack. They're tossed hither and yon. Mowgli sets up an elaborate trap in this tree. Shere Khan starts climbing the tree, too. Mowgli lures Shere Khan all the way out to the end of a branch. Jumps off the limb onto his safety rope. And Shere Khan falls to his death, which is a combination heights and fire. Bad kitty. <laughs> the jungle's gonna get burned down. Oh, those elephants. They remember Mowgli's kindness and they divert the river so it will flood down and put out the fire. Will you look at that? An elephant is faithful 100%. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. 
Mowgli's back to running with the wolves. They're all hanging out and enjoying the bare necessities of life. And that is The Jungle Book. The Jungle Book, the movie. Mm-hmm. I got some major problems with this. Oh, you do? I do. For one thing, Shere Khan, the villain, kind of has a point. As all best villains do. But this leads to the more important point. Mowgli really shouldn't be there. He should go to the village. <laughs> Let's look at the law of the jungle. The wolf that keeps it, it prosper. The wolf that breaks it will die. He disobeys it all the time. He uses his man's tricks to interfere with nature. That's fundamentally wrong. He brings fire into the jungle, he's irresponsible and clumsy <laughs> with it, and he almost burns the whole place down. Yes. And by the end of the movie, he's right back where he started. There's mm -hmm. no character development, there's no growth. He's hanging out with this slacker bear. Once he becomes an adult, he's not going to be happy. He's not going to be fulfilled. He's not going to be able to find a mate. He's not going to be able to <laughs> do anything or build anything. His personality is going to change. Mm -hmm. He could become exactly what Shere Khan says that he could become when he grows up. Or he could become Tarzan, you know, the lord of the jungle. Well, Tarzan was meant to go back to England and reclaim the estate of Greystoke. <laughs> I think that there is some character development. And as for breaking the laws of the jungle, Baloo at one point says, well, laws are there, and you bend them, and you work your sure. way around them, and that's how you get ahead. All I'm saying is I'm worried. You're worried? I'm worried for the denizens of the jungle. And for Mowgli himself. Either way would be a bad choice. You can go back to the world of man and be a freak, probably something less than an untouchable. That's even more depressing. Yeah. Shere Khan's a really good villain. Not just that he has valid points, but that he is straight up terrifying. Sure, oh yeah. When there's that scene where he's talking to the wolf cubs in the middle of the night and it's like just, oh my god, I want him dead now. <laughs> and that he's just so formidable that he can take down Bagheera, he can take down Baloo, there's no one that can stop him. I do really like how man is depicted in this. They're scary and confusing. Vaguely threatening. In the book, The Jungle Book, they're called the mysterious things that are called man. Why would he want to go back to them? They're these alien species. Because it is his destiny. It is his destiny. And there is a sequel coming. Let's talk about the songs. I didn't want them to be there. Yes. I was hoping that this wouldn't be a remake of The Jungle Book, but a retelling of the story of The Jungle Book. But it is a remake of The Jungle Book. I know Book. it is. And if I don't want it to be. <laughs> I don't think the songs were done very well. I didn't like the sound of them, I didn't like the music, I didn't like the singing. If Disney is going to remake their own Jungle Book, they better have those two songs. But Baloo's just kind of singing, like, this is a song I sing sometimes. I would have liked it a lot better if it was a cappella then. Because the music was just, it just felt tacky. Well, I, I, I understand that says what you think. And What do you think? Did I you like love it. the songs? I, Did you think that they were great? I'm fine with them being in the movie. That it's, If it is a remake of the Jungle Book, that makes me feel more at home. Now let me explain King Louis. King Louis is based off of a prehistoric ape called the Gigantophithecus. He sings a one line. Now you might think it's ridiculous that me, a Gigantopithecus. He is based on a larger great ape, although they did make him larger than he they actually were. He made him King Kong. Yeah, I think King Louis scene was very creepy. So, I like that part, yeah. but then he starts singing and dispels all of that. The song. You think I'm some big grumpus mm. because I'm criticizing these songs. No, before the movie started... I hope there's no songs. So you came in with a little bit of bias against the songs. I'm not sure who this movie is for. Is this PG-13? I think it's PG. Pretty scary violence. Yeah. What age group is this appropriate for? You really can't plan these things out with the kids. Is he going to be afraid of tigers at the end of the movie? That's fine. I don't want him hanging out with tigers. I mean, I'm all for... Movies that scare kids. You told me that you saw the original one a lot. I did, but I don't remember how it ends. Mowgli does go back to the man village, and the first thing he sees is a young girl his yes, own age. Yes, I, now I remember that. Yes. Yeah. How did you think the CGI held up? They obviously did some really good mocap, mm -hmm. motion capture, because that bear had Bill Murray's face. But as far as I know, they didn't use motion capture, and at least not with Bill Murray, that they didn't have they him going to. around with a, the because, ping pong balls all over Because him. I know what he looks like when he talks, and mm -hmm. the bear looked exactly like that. The how do they do that moment for me in it was during the bear necessity sequence. Mowgli is straddling Baloo's chest, 
and splashing water over his chest. How did he do that? We've turned the final page on the Jungle Book and we watched it. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. You could watch it too. Ooh, ooh. And now it is necessary for us to do Seen It. Seen It. Tempo Topos writes, if you're in the mood for some Putney Swope panic, I recommend Sorry to Bother You. Seen It. Seen It. If Jean-Luc Godard <laughs> was American and black and about 40 years younger, this would be the movie he would make. Those are strong words considering how I feel about Jean-Luc Godard. But yes, go on. It is such a mess. And like many of Godard's films, it seems more focused on ideas and messages rather than comedy and mm -hmm. relationships. And I find that really frustrating. What we have here is a filmmaker who is unable or unwilling to edit himself. This is my movie. I gotta say it all. This might be my only chance. Yeah, I hope in his next one, he looks back at Sorry to Bother You and says, okay, this is the 20 things I did wrong. I'm not gonna do that again. <laughs> it can be seen as a critique against capitalism, and it can be seen as a critique of race relations in the United States. Recently, I was called by a telemarketer, and I'll be damned if it wasn't a black guy giving me the white voice. <laughs> you know what he said to me? Well, you're harder to get a hold of than the last pickle in the jar. <laughs> Click. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to bother you. It's appropriate that the title for this film is an apology. Hey, are there any other films that are apologies on this list? Quinn Powers asking, can you ever forgive me? Seen it. I was so happy that Richard E. Grant got a nomination for this. I think he totally deserved it. I wish he had won, but yeah, that's how that goes. You know who also wishes Richard E. Grant won? Mahershala Ali. <laughs> I've never seen an acceptance speech so much like, I'm really sorry I won. <laughs> he deserves the Oscar just for this moment, which I'm going to reenact for you, and I apologize for the language. Who is Fanny Bryce? Are you sure you're a fag? <laughs> <laughs> She's playing someone who's reprehensible from word go. She's a misanthrope. And yet, you like her the entire way through. And that's tricky. I think we like her because we can relate to her. Because we've all felt desperate at times. Yeah. We've all felt like we haven't had enough money. Jake Withy, your talk of rewatching Twin Peaks made me wonder, have you guys seen Fire Walk With Me? Seen it. Seen it in the theater. I think Fire Walk With Me is kind of getting a critical reevaluation. Mm -hmm. Critics are saying it's not as bad as we originally thought it was. They're wrong. <laughs> it starts off on a bad foot right away because we spend the first 20 minutes not in Twin Peaks, mm -hmm. but with these two cops. One of them is Chris Isaac, who is a terrible actor. <laughs> and then we've got David Bowie showing up, mm -hmm. doing whatever the hell he's doing. Dressed up like David Bowie, and you can't understand what he's saying. 20 minutes in, we're back in lovable old Twin Peaks, we're hearing that music, but we're already exhausted and frustrated. The whole first 20 minutes that you complain about at least showed us something <laughs> that they talked about on the show that we did had no idea about. The right. woman down in Oregon that the same thing happened to. Hearing about how Laura Palmer dies and who killed her in the original series is so much different than actually witnessing exactly. it. Exactly. we don't this, need to see that. It's a completely unnecessary movie. We've heard this story through secondhand accounts and hearsay and mystical mumbo jumbo. And that's so much more fascinating than this step-by-step -step reenactment. I don't need to see Bob running on top of Laura Palmer mm -hmm. in her bedroom because yeah. I know that it happened and it's even more gross and terrifying in my brain. Yeah. They're filling in the blank spaces. Nope. They're just coloring in <laughs> filled in spaces that much darker. Sam Postol writes, Dazed and confused. It's incredible how that movie makes 90 minutes feel like an entire night. Seen it. Seen it. Now you just watched this. It's a movie that was playing in every single dorm room, but I've never sat down and watched it from beginning to end. Yeah. It's good. It holds up. The purpose of nostalgia movies like this, or American Graffiti, mm -hmm. or Stand By Me, it's to make the viewer feel like they're watching their own youth, even if their youth was nothing like what's happening on screen. Yeah. And I think this movie successfully does that. Something that is not a book is our website, welcome to the basement show.com. You can go there and see all the episodes that we've recorded, and there are PayPal donation buttons you can donate to help support this show, a one-time or rolling monthly donation. Here are some of our current rolling monthly donors. Abigail, Alfred, William, Joseph, and B.A. Mikey D. Thank you all. To find out who the rest of our donors are and to see the contents of our mail crate, you can watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. Thank you for celebrating my birthday with us by watching The Jungle Book, and now you can watch this. 
And the other thing that pisses me off, David Lynch has given us less than a dozen feature ten films. Ten movies. Ten movies. And this is one of them. <laughs> he could have not done this and given us another straight story. Straight story part two. The road back. <laughs> Man is forbidden. 